Hello, welcome to another video of the complete Angular course. In this video, I'll be talking about attribute directives. Attribute directives are add-ons that we add to HTML DOM elements inline in the HTML page. We can use them to add additional features and behavior to an element. There are many of them already available in Angular, but in this video, we will create our own. Open your Angular project on VS Code. To begin, create an attribute directive called custom attribute by using the ng generate directive command. This command will create a directive TypeScript file and add it to the app module so we can use it in the application. Inside the directive TypeScript file, there is a directive decorator on top of the class declaration to indicate that this class is a directive. The selected property is the name we use to add the directive to an element. Go to the app component HTML page. Add a paragraph element and give it some text. Then add the custom attribute directive to the paragraph. Get the value from the selected property in the directive decorator and then place it inside the open tag of the element. Save the project and start the local server. Open the browser and go to localhost 4200. As you can see, our application still works, but nothing is happening. This is because we have not defined anything in the class file. Go back to VS Code. Go to the custom attribute directive TypeScript file. Let's say we want this attribute to change the text color elements to red. Normally to do this, we will get the reference of the element with the getElementById function. Access the style property and then set the color but Angular will automatically pass the reference of the element that's using the attribute through the constructor. So we can declare a parameter in the constructor to take the reference as an argument. Then we can declare a variable to store the reference and use it in our code. To change the color of the text, we take the reference access the style property, and then set the color to red. So now it will turn our text to red. Let's verify that. Save the project and go to the browser. As you can see, it turned the color of the text to red. We can also use attribute directives to add events. Go back to VS Code. Let's say that we want to change the color of the text to orange when we click on the element. Normally, we will take the reference of the element and call the add event listener function to add an event but there's a more proper way to add events in attribute directives. We should use the host listener decorators. These decorators let us listen to DOM events of the host. If you're curious to who the host is, the host is the element that's using the attribute. So if we put this in a paragraph element, the paragraph element is the host. Similarly, if we put this in a component, that component will be the host. Let's see how we can add a click event using the host listener decorator. To begin, add host listener to the import. This will allow us to use the host listener decorator. Define a method that you want to use for an event. Add the host listener decorator as part of the method declaration to start listening to an event. Inside the parentheses, we put the event we want to listen to. We want to listen to the click event. Lastly, in the body of the method, put the code to change the color of the text to orange. Now elements that has this attribute will listen for any click events and change the color of the text to orange when it's clicked on. Save the project and go to the browser. Click on the paragraph. As you can see, we add a click event to the paragraph element. In addition to events, we can also add inputs and outputs to insert and broadcast information. Go back to VS Code. Instead of using static values like orange, we want to be able to use any color. Therefore, we would declare an input. Add input to our import so we can start declaring inputs and then declare an input variable. Instead of using orange, we will use the value of the input. Go to the app component HTML page. To access inputs in an attribute directive, we use the square bracket syntax and then provide the name of the input we want inside the brackets. Then we assign a value that we want to insert. We will use purple. 
So right now, the color of the text should change to purple instead of orange when we click on it. Save the project and go to the browser. Click on the paragraph. As you can see, instead of having a static value, we made it so that it can use any value. I want to mention one more thing. Go back to VS Code. Right now, we have an attribute directive and an input from the attribute separately from each other in the element. We can combine the two like this. This is called the compact syntax. To do this is simple. We need to change the name of our input variable to match the value of the selected property for the attribute directive. Since the value of the selected property is app custom attribute, change the input name to app custom attribute. Save the project and go to the browser. Click on the paragraph. As you can see, it worked the same way, but this time we used the compact syntax to add the attribute and insert a value at the same time. Let's take a moment to recap what we have learned. We learned how to create an attribute directive using the ng-generate-directive command. We learned how to add an attribute directive to an element by taking the value of the selected property in the directive decorator and placing it in the opening tag of an element. We learned that Angular passes a reference of the element that we apply the attribute directive to in the constructor. We learn how to add events by using the host listener decorators. We also learn how to use the compact syntax to add the attribute to the element and insert a value at the same time. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe to support the channel. If you have questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. See you in the next video.